what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on the november monthly horoscope for 2017 only two more months are remaining now to do horoscopes and we will see what are the transits that are happening in the month of november starting from first till 30th lots of transitions happening here and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video then click the thumbs up and watch my other videos and especially the Bhagavad Gita series which I have started recently and now let us see what is happening in November well I have made the notes because there are lots of transitions which are happening and it's very difficult to remember exact dates so the first of November starts with the planet the two best friends Jupiter Sun in the sign of Libra now what is Jupiter Jupiter is our spirituality Jupiter represents our higher wisdom our beliefs it is with Sun and also Mercury is in the last degrees of Libra in the starting of November so Jupiter Mercury and Sun and Jupiter Mercury although they don't get along well with each other but it's still very good for purposes like education for gaining knowledge for gaining divine wisdom yes because Mercury represents the uh, intricate deal in uh, the details and Jupiter represents the broad-minded uh, nature of every individual the ability to see beyond the details and to grasp what is actually the fact of the matter that is what Jupiter is and it also represents the Guru and Mercury is also the young child so Jupiter Mercury conjunction can be very good and especially this is happening with Sun in Libra now what is Libra Libra is the sign of balance Libra is the original seventh house of the zodiac so Libra energy is very harmonious with the nature of Mercury because Mercury is the planet which is based uh, which gives us the power to make our decisions yes Sun gives the ability to be fixed Mercury gives the ability to decide okay see this see that and then you decide so this ability of Mercury to see the different perspectives to analyze things from different angles is very well situated in the sign of Libra it comes out in a very beautiful way because now Mercury is in the sign of Libra which is the sign of balance so Mercury says okay let me see this side let me see that side and then because the Sun is also there it helps us to uh, make make a decision ultimately yes because Mercury just can give you the pros and cons but it is ultimately the Sun who decides that is why Sun is the significator of decisions and decision making etc therefore if somebody's son is in a difficult state then the person will always have difficulty making decisions in life making choices of uh, deciding what to keep in one's life and what to let go of in one's life yes now Jupiter is also our spirituality so now we will see that till the next one year till October next year when Jupiter stays in the sign of Libra that the different religions the different uh, spiritual gurus they will be very open-minded they'll be very broad-minded towards hearing what the other religions have to say rather than uh, focusing too much on what their own religion has to say that can happen more if Jupiter is in a sign like Aries because Libra is the sign of balance so now the spiritual teachers will be like yes 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 I know what I'm thinking but I just want to know what you think about this and what what, what does your religion say so Jupiter in Libra although it is an enemy sign but it is quite a relatively good placement for Jupiter I guess better than Virgo from last year where Jupiter was in a tendency to criticize fine faults with everybody with every other religion yes so now with Libra it kind of tries to balance the different extremes it doesn't try to uh, say that okay what I think Jupiter is also our purpose our our uh, what, what you say our aspirations our hopes our desires so it also represents our ideals in one way yes because that is the significator of character one's character can be known by the level of ideals the person follows so here we might see that because of Jupiter being in Libra sometimes we might compromise with our ideals which can be one of the challenges with Jupiter in Libra yes because Libra is the sign of compromise so 
Now sun is also in Libra. So sun is debilitated. It is considered to be in its debilitation in the sign of Libra because sun gets exalted in Aries, which is the sign of individuality, which is the sign of our own self, which is the sign of our instincts. So we are ideally supposed to do what we want to do. And when sun comes into Libra, what happens is the Atma, the, the soul, which is the signifier of the self, the power in the jar, the fire, <laughs> that gets entangled in materialistic desires and when you get entangled in materialistic desires what happens you get attached to other people yes why is sun considered to be debilitated in libra why is libra such a bad sign for the sun well the reason is because the pure consciousness the soul sun is the significator of the soul when the pure consciousness the chitta comes into this material world when it entangles itself in the sign of Libra, which is the original seventh house of uh, desire, sexuality, then what happens is we lose our divine connection to God because when sun is in Libra, it means that the focus of the person is in relationships, is in uh, sensuality, is in sexuality, is in mundane affairs of this world too much. <laughs> Otherwise, your sun will not be in Libra. So then what happens is you become attached and when you become attached, you lose your inner identity because if a man is too much attached to his wife, then what happens? Even if he wants to do something, if the wife doesn't agree to that, he cannot do, right? Because he is attached, because he knows that she is my source of pleasure. So if I displease her, if I deny her or if I go against her, then... I will not be happy. So then what happens is when sun is in Libra, we kind of compromise with our own beliefs, our own thinking, our own desires. And then we are forced to listen to somebody else. And we are forced to do what others want us to do rather than wanting which we want to do. That because that happens because of attachment. So that is why sun is considered to be debilitated in Libra. And here, although Jupiter, Sun, Mercury, all three are in Libra, so this energy can work out in a very harmonious way that we can socialize with people, we can understand each other's viewpoints, we can try to know what he thinks about me, uh, what is your opinion about my uh, process, what is your opinion about my goal. So there we see that the harmony comes in. But at the same time, we have to be very careful that we do not uh, compromise too much on our ideals because... Jupiter Sun both represents our ideals and both are in Libra. So this is good in a way for understanding the viewpoints of others and trying to make a balance, a negotiation. But at the same time, the consequences can be that we go too much, we try to balance things in such a level that we forget we also have our own ideals. Especially this, uh, these kind of placements can lead to compromising one's spiritual values, spiritual identity because Jupiter and Sun both are in the sign of desire, materialistic desire, which is Libra, yes. So then we can try to justify our own actions that, no, no, it is okay. Even if I do not do my meditation for the next two days, it is okay. Anyways, I have a cricket match to see. I have a... <clears throat> If you are in Germany, maybe you see football or maybe if you are in some other country, you are seeing baseball. So it is very important that we do not compromise with our spiritual ideals because <coughs> although Jupiter is in Libra, which tries to balance things, but uh, it is very prominently seen that they can always compromise with their ideals, especially uh, spiritual goals, spiritual motivations. And because the sun, the significator of the power, is also very weak in Libra. That is why we need to take care that along with balancing the harmony with others, we do not compromise on our own ideals and things that we consider valuable, yes. And then as the month starts, we see that Mercury moves into the sign of Scorpio. And Mercury, which is the planet of our intellectual pursuits, which is the planet of our ability to think, grasp, yes. Now it moves into the karmic sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is what? It is a hidden sign. It is a very dark sign. It is a difficult sign. So what happens when Mercury enters Scorpio is the intellect is 
forced to dive deep, dig deep into the matters of the hidden realm. You can see that many financial uh, scandals, they are coming out during this period when especially Mercury stays in Scorpio. Yes, in the, uh, till uh, almost 27th or 25th it is there. Mercury is there in uh, Scorpio till 25th. And then what happens is uh, our money and our different sources of income can see that we can see that in areas of money there can be uh, things which we have to sort out because Scorpio is the sign of uh, our karma yes it's a very karmic sign so then uh, we might feel this need that we have to actually see what can give us monetary income and if there are certain sources which we have been having and they have not been giving us the fulfillment then it might happen because Scorpio is ruled by Ketu we might have to let go of certain things yes and uh, Mercury also represents our ability to uh, see the pros and cons and because it's Scorpio is a water sign so and Mercury gets debilitated in Pisces so therefore it it is relatively a challenging position especially Scorpio even for Mercury because uh, it is a dark house mercury doesn't understand what should i see because it's dark so mercury doesn't see so we can undergo this paralysis that we are trying to see things from a different perspective when mercury jupiter sun is in libra and then uh, suddenly we are like confused okay what should i do what should i not do that paralysis can happen when mercury goes into scorpio because we might be too much or the sign of obsession is also the sign of scorpio because uh, it is the original eighth house yes so we may also become so much caught up in our own thinking and our own some inner passion or some inner desire that we are not able to see what is what, what, what actually we should decide because what happens when mercury is in a water sign is the tendency of emotions will overcome uh, mercury yes and generally it is not good to mix intellect and emotions because both are represented by moon and mercury intellect is mercury and moon represents the emotions so whenever these two are together or they are seven houses apart then this difficulty can come in a person that either he has to be intellectual or emotional he cannot be uh, both simultaneously because they do not get along well with each other because mercury considers that moon is his enemy although moon doesn't consider mercury to be his enemy but mercury considers moon so therefore you will see that whenever you bring emotions which is water sign like scorpio into mercury mercury doesn't like it mercury suffers because then mercury is not able to see things analytically which it is supposed to that means when we are supposed to make some decision we are supposed to be analytical and we are not supposed to be emotional yes so that is one paralysis which can happen with uh, mercury in scorpio but at the same time this is a very uh, good time to actually go very deep to the roots of our belief systems of what we think is right and what we think is wrong because the sun will also move into the sign of Scorpio by 15th yes 15th of November and then for the next 10 days from 15 November to 25th the Mercury and Sun conjunction will happen again yes so then sun does relatively better in scorpio than in libra because now the planet sun has come out from the zone of libra and now it is in the zone of obsession so now it tries to learn things jupiter and sun are perhaps the only planet which planets which are relatively do very well in the sign of scorpio apart from any other planet because they try to take lessons they try to see what is going on in the dark world they try to see what is going on deep down inside they try to see that what i am not able to see because sun is light so whenever sun enters scorpio there is light there so we can notice that wherever uh, scorpio is falling in our chart as per the ascendant then we can see that those areas suddenly become uh, enlightened because those areas where scorpio is in our chart that house tends to remain very secreted, tends to remain very confusing, tends to remain very dark, tends to remain very, as in the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, Andhakupam, <laughs> it remains like a deep dark well which we don't see. So when 
sun enter Scorpio, then we kind of try to see what is there and it becomes visible to us. So that is uh, very good actually because we should know what other dark things which are there in the karma, in the consciousness, yes. So Sun Mercury will be together for the next 10 days from 15th of November to 25th. And then what happens is on 3rd of <coughs> November, Venus the planet of love, uh, romance, sexuality, sensuality, that will come and it is in its debilitation currently till November 3rd. And on 3rd November, it will leave Mars because Mars is also in Virgo till the end of November. So then what happens is on 3rd, Venus will come out from its debilitation and it will enter the sign of Libra where it is extremely powerful. It is considered to be a moon tricone sign for Venus because Venus ultimately is all about Libra. The Libra energy is to be summed up in a one word. It's Venus, right? Because it deals with uh, communication with other people. Basically what Venus is, you try to understand what the other person is saying. You try to have a connection. That's the sign of Libra. So Venus will be there till 27th November. Uh, in the sign of Libra. So we have this beautiful Jupiter-Venus conjunction happening in the sign of Libra. So wherever Libra energy is affecting in our chart, whichever house Libra is falling from our ascendant, you will see that there's a lot of beauty, a lot of goodness, a lot of positivity that has uh, that is dawning upon that house. And we are trying to uh, enjoy things regarding that house in a very beautiful way we are trying to be very positive for example if uh, you are a Capricorn ascendant then this conjunction of Jupiter Venus which happens only once in a year for 20-25 days this will happen in uh, the 10th house for a Capricorn ascendant so then you can have beautiful uh, new avenues your career or, or your workplace can become very beautiful become very beautiful it doesn't mean that uh, you will have women there or you will have the opposite sex it simply means that you will become very positive about that area and you will be like, yes, let me try to see how can I gain happiness from my work. You will try to beautify things, yes, and you will try to uh, do things collectively. You will try to take opinions of others because Venus in Libra represents all these opinions, other people. And then you will be very positive and you will want to do something new, something creative, yes, towards that house wherever Libra is falling in your horoscope. And if you're a Libra ascendant, then this can happen in your ascendant itself yes then you will try to want to maybe uh, look good <laughs> look great because jupiter venus are both natural benefits and here although uh, jupiter is not very well placed in libra because venus is the ruler and it is having its multicon there so now venus will dominate this jupiter venus conjunction therefore uh, we may not be very much interested in our spiritual pursuits for the month of November because Jupiter will be high, heavily influenced by the sign of Libra now because the ruler itself is there. So now Jupiter is like, okay, I have to listen to Venus now. <laughs> and we, uh, if you are married and if you have children, then this is a great time to develop a communication with them, to do some new creative things with them, to go on a vacation or to have a good time with your children because Jupiter represents your children. And if you are married, then Venus mm -hmm. represents uh, your spouse. So in that case, it is very important that uh, we start to uh, do some new spiritual practice because then Jupiter will also influence Venus, which is our marriage, our, our uh, conjugal relationship with the spouse, yes. So it is uh, very good if we can uh, start some new spiritual practice till the time Jupiter Venus is in Libra because that will help us. That energy will be very harmonious because both try to, uh, both will try to impact each other although Venus is more powerful here, yes. And on November 4th, we have the full moon which is happening in the sign of Aries because Sun is in Libra and moon will be in the sign of Aries. So full moon means the sun and moon are exactly seven houses apart and something related to that house where moon is that comes into completion because the new moon happened in October uh, the Amavasya which is a new moon where uh, moon is not visible it's 
just pitched up. That happened on 19th of October this year and that happened in the sign of Libra. So what is Libra basically? It happened in um, Chitra Nakshatra, yes, when Sun was in two degrees and Moon was also in two degrees of Libra. So what is Libra basically? Libra is the sign of other people. So now we decided that Sun came from Virgo to the sign of Libra. So what happened was now Sun was very critical about things very much nitpicky about details so now when sun moved into libra sun decided that okay now i will uh, try to give away my critical nature and i will try to see what other people are doing i will try to balance myself yes and when moon also comes there the new moon takes place there and then uh, new beginnings re related to libra can happen especially uh, where, wherever house libra is falling and then what happens is we try to see what others are doing we try to see how we can harmonize ourselves with others and then when the full moon happens the full moon will happen exactly seven houses apart from the sun so the full moon will happen in aries in bharani nakshatra so basically what it means is we begin with uh, seeing our uh, ability to compromise which is in libra and then uh, on 19th of october and then it went to the a full moon in Aries which means that now we will try to see that are we able to harmonize ourselves which is the first house which is the sign of Aries yes are we able to harmonize ourselves what we should be doing within the relationship relationship doesn't mean a conjugal relationship or marriage it can be with anybody any friend or even a business dealer any partner or even with your boss even with your father so the a new moon which happened in Libra where we started to see other people and what others think and what others are doing and how we can harmonize when it comes into the completion in Aries we will see that how are our own objectives getting fulfilled in that yes because that is very important otherwise uh, the dynamics uh, will not uh, affect us because if you are only trying to do what others want or if you are only trying to please others then uh, what will be the ultimate uh, result we will our own objective will not be fulfilled right so when moon will come into bharani nakshatra yes which is the nakshatra ruled by yamaraj and it is a nakshatra of venus so yamaraj represents the controllership authority dominance punishment yes <laughs> so then uh, we will uh, try to see that whatever we started in libra if it is not coming into fulfillment then maybe we will try to let go of that thing yes let go of a relationship let go doesn't mean uh, the kind of 12th house it simply means that we will just see what what a level of harmony we ourselves have achieved within that uh, relationship when sun was in libra yes otherwise if that is not happening we will have a tendency to cut things off because bharani nakshatra is the nakshatra of butchers <laughs> That doesn't mean everybody who has moon in Bharani is a butcher. It doesn't mean that. But it simply uh, shows the ability to cut things. Yes, because even the Nakshatra Kritika is also in Aries, the first father. So if we realize that after listening to everybody, after trying to harmonize, something is not working, then we'll be like, bang on, let it go. It's not happening. I'll only listen to myself. <laughs> so we will see this, how this dy dynamics within other people and my opinion within them within that uh, stage within that stature is happening and if it is not happening then we will have to decide what to do yes and till the end of november mars will be still in the sign of Virgo. so mars what is mars mars is the sign of fire aggression our anger our our determination our nature to be very headstrong our instinct that is basically mars so that planet is in the sign of virgo so from long time it is there <laughs> and it will be there till the entire month of november so wherever the sign of virgo is falling there can be some uh, some aggression towards <coughs> that house especially uh, people like libra ascendants they need to be careful because this is happening in their 12th house so they, this can cause difficulty in sleep because Mars and Mercury don't get along well with each other very much. So what happens is Mars is the planet which says take decision, take instinct, just act, don't think much. And Mercury says don't, 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 don't act, think, slow down. <laughs> 
that is why uh, Saturn Mercury gets along very well but Saturn Mars also doesn't get along very well because Mars tell Mars is like the accelerator and Saturn is like the brake so then when Saturn uh, Saturn or Mercury comes in con connection with Mars then uh, there is some difficulty in that area unless Mars is exalted in Capricorn obviously so then what happens is when Mars is in Virgo we try to get too much obsessed about details because wherever Mars sits it will get modified by the nature of that house yes so when Mars comes into the sign of Virgo there is over analysis I would say <laughs> or there is a very strong instinct to not listen to others because it is the sign Virgo it is 12th from Libra which is what listening to other people a loss of ability to listen to others is the sign of Virgo because in Virgo we are very critical yes no no I want it this way or it is not going to happen my way or highway so we can see that when Mars stays in Virgo till the end of uh, November you can see uh, although Venus will be there for the first two days and then it will leave and it will go to Libra but you will see Mars will still continue to be there so then we can have this instinctive nature that we are not at all ready to listen to anybody we are like no no I already said if it will happen this way it will happen or it will not happen so we need to be very careful we need to be very careful regarding our uh, instinctive abilities that uh, we do not blast on other people just because their opinion is not matching with ours yes because that can happen when Mars is in Virgo we can feel that no nobody is listening to me I will also not listen to anybody so we should try to even though it will be very difficult because Mars is the fire it is very much fiery it is even more fiery than the Sun so wherever Mars is that uh, that area can have a lot of aggression too much anger and too much passion so this can be a good time to um, see if there there is some area which requires proper planning in our life so that we can systematize those areas that we can do that very well with Mars and Virgo because then we can use the fiery qualities of Mars in the sign of Virgo yes because then that will benefit us instead of uh, just quarreling about each other's opinions or being very much headstrong with what we think is right and wrong yes so that is the precaution that we need to take for uh, the placement of Mars in Virgo and 30th November Jupiter and Mars will be conjunct in the sign of Libra again <laughs> so about that we will discuss later when we discuss uh, the December horoscope and then what is happening is Saturn which what is Saturn Saturn is the significator of our karma so by the end of October for the next two years finally Saturn has decided to move into the sign of Sagittarius so what is Saturn Saturn represents our duty structure commitment our ability to be disciplined Saturn's one word is discipline Saturn's main trait is Capricorn and Aquarius yes where it is which is their own sign and uh, the most own sign respectively so now Saturn will be entering Sagittarius again after being retrograde going back to Scorpio again stationing and again coming back after the, this hodgepodge from uh, April uh, yes there has been a quite of a hodgepodge from uh, April itself yes therefore uh, now we will see that uh, Saturn after staying three years in this dark house in the sign of Scorpio Saturn has now finally come out from it and given us a lot of lessons and Saturn in Scorpio told us it showed us what is our strong points what is our weak points because Scorpio is the sign of karma yes primarily it is the sign of karma karmic balance karmic baggage psychological baggage so those people who have Saturn prominent for example if you are a Capricorn ascendant or if you are an Aquarius ascendant then this will have new beginnings in your life yes or whichever house Saturn is ruling if you are a, a Leo or a Cancer ascendant then Saturn rules the seventh house of marriage then now your dynamics of the marriage will change now what happens is when Saturn goes into Sagittarius Sagittarius is almost like a neutral sign for Saturn 
although it is millions of times better than Scorpio for Saturn to be in Sagittarius, yes, than to be in Scorpio. Because now here, Sagittarius is what? It is the original ninth house of God, wisdom, spirituality, yes. And then when Saturn enters the divine sign of Sagittarius, we come to know that what will actually inspire us. So our karma, our discipline, yes, they will be very much focused towards doing things positively in a way that we can inspire ourselves and inspire others. And for a long time, for many months, Saturn will be in the nakshatra of Mula, yes. So what is Mula nakshatra? Mula nakshatra represents the roots, yes. Mula is the roots, that is why in Sanskrit you say Mool Tattva means the ground, the grass root, that which is there in the bottom. So uh, when Saturn is in Mula nakshatra, we can see that the, the if there are certain issues pertaining to Scorpio, which is what? Unsorted issues is the sign of Scorpio because things which are not sorted, which are still hovering in the surface, those things will be uprooted, especially if you are a Capricorn Ascendant or if you are an Aquarius Ascendant, some, then some very strong deep-rooted issue which you are dealing. Maybe you are doing a PhD from last three years, four years, it's not completing or maybe you are doing a Masters, <coughs> which is not getting over or you are doing some job which you finally realized you can't do it anymore, then Saturn, when it enters, Mula Nakshatra in Sagittarius, it will simply uproot it. Yes, and when it uproots it, it will uh, simply throw it. <laughs> that means we will either change it or either we will try to finish it. Anything it can be. If you are trying to work on some project and it is not working from last one year, two year, you are, you are just wasting your money, your time, your energy, your resources. Then finally you will realize that uh, maybe it's not a very good idea to do this anymore because Saturn will tell you that, look my dear, now it is the time to uproot it. Either, see Mula Nakshatra is like a binary scale. Either you are this side or you are that side. It is not some with something which is in between. It is not Libra, yes, where you try to balance things. So. When Saturn enters Mula Nakshatra, we will see many people, they will uh, change their careers. <laughs> they will rip apart some part of their own karma because Saturn, irrespective of the houses, Saturn rules in our chart. Saturn is the planet of karma for everybody. It is the Karma Adipati because it is the original ruler of the 10th house because it is the sign of Capricorn, right? And it is also the one of the significators of the 10th house apart from Sun and Mercury. So, irrespective of the signs Saturn rules in our chart or irrespective of wherever it is placed or whichever sign it is placed, we will see that our karma will take a new dimension and people will become very positive because now they will see, now they will be able to see that, yes, I have to decide on this area on these things which are pending from last three years yes otherwise things will go haywire <laughs> and that's what happened that is how the sign of sagittarius is arranged because then what happens is you will decide on what to do and then you will either throw it or you will complete it yes and then when you solve the deep rooted issues, then finally Saturn will move into the nakshatra of Purvashada later the next year. Yes. And what is Purvashada? Purvashada is the nakshatra of faith. It is the nakshatra of belief in something very sublime, in the belief in God. Yes. And then Uttarashada is the next nakshatra where Saturn will be by the end of 2019 also, where we will try to practically put forward our beliefs regarding our work, our abilities, our discipline into practical action because Uttarashada comes in both Sagittarius and it extends to Capricorn also. So these are the dynamics which will uh, happen and uh, since the new moon is happening on, uh, sorry, the full moon is happening in, Lib in Libra on 4th, so <clears throat> roughly after uh, around 15 days, maybe nearby 19th or 18th or 20th we will again have the new moon in the sign of Scorpio yes so when again there's a new moon in the sign of Scorpio then we will see that psychological issues will come to the front because both sun and moon are there yes they are the most important planets in transit in the chart 
in anybody's time. So then by the mid of the month, we will see this new moon which is happening in the sign of Scorpio. So what will happen then is we will be uh, we will be forced to look on some very deep psychological issues which have been lurking us from the past, from past one year maybe. <laughs> Because especially Saturn had also been in the sign of Scorpio, yes. So that that there is a dual paradigm there of uh, the new moon and sun because uh, and Saturn because although Saturn has Saturn will be uh, we would have already left Scorpio by end of October, but still uh, that that energy will be there for some time, yes. Therefore, uh, I would say that it will be very good when the new moon happens by around. 19th or maybe so around 18th or 20th of November in Scorpio then whatever Saturn had decided and it went retrograde and it came back into Sagittarius again those objectives will uh, finally be put forth yes we will be able to see new beginnings in the area of Scorpio which is the original 8th house the dark house yes and then we will have the courage to move forward yes we will have the courage to see ahead and then ultimately move forward by sorting out those psychological issues those issues of fear which is the sign of scorpio yes and that is why there has been this paranoid fear among people what will happen what will happen the world will be destroyed that has that had happened because of saturn's presence in scorpio because saturn is the ruler of our karma so when saturn goes into scorpio this is the sign of fear people fear to do anything but now when it enters sagittarius people will become very hopeful very positive and by the end of this month venus will be joined the sun in scorpio on 27 and mercury will also join saturn on 25th of november <laughs> and then mercury and saturn will be a beautiful combination to have in the sign of Sagittarius where we not only work practically but we also try to analyze things from different perspectives on what is working and what is not working and why it is not working. Why in the universe are things not working? Then we will try to sort things in the way that uh, requires very much decision, planning, execution, yes, and discipline also. Because Saturn Mercury uh, get along very well in this area because they represent all these things planning, structure, discipline, ability to see what is right, what is wrong, and that too it will happen in Sagittarius. So, where, whichever house Sagittarius is from your Lagna, uh, you can be very disciplined towards that house, especially when Mercury and Saturn get together. And I think that is it from my side. I have covered Sun, Venus, Jupiter, and Libra in. 3rd and 4th November in Bharani Nakshatra we have the full moon where we will try to see our own situation in comparison to others how much have the sophisticated uh, nature of Libra which is what sophisticated balance <laughs> that has been achieved and how much is our uh, aims fulfilled in that uh, compromise which is the sign of Libra yes and then sun moves into scorpio on 15th of november and mercury moves with saturn on 25th in the sign of sagittarius and venus stays with jupiter almost till the end and on 27th it again moves into the sign of scorpio with sun and on 30th november the planet mars will move into the sign of libra where it will stay with jupiter for the next 40 45 days and finally, the most important thing in November is Saturn finally, after three years, after October 2014, finally now it has moved into the sign of Sagittarius. So a lot of positivity will come in this world. Hope, belief in the higher power, belief in true wisdom, belief in God. As I say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will be there. So now, whichever houses Libra and Scorpio is falling from your ascendant, those are the houses where you will feel most of the changes, most of the uh, most of the dynamics which are taking place. Yes, and as we all know, Rahu Ketu is in the sign of Cancer, and the Ketu is in the sign of Capricorn. And because now no none of the planets are uh, uh, 
uh, away, uh, none of the planets are on the other side, which means every planet is on one side of Rahu Ketu. So the Kal Sarp Yoga is also going on. Yes, and the Kal Sarp Yoga will break when uh, by December, maybe when Mercury comes into Capricorn and it will break off because then we will have planets on both sides of Rahu Ketu. So Kal Sarp Yoga means all the planets are on all the seven planets are on one side of Rahu and Ketu yes so that shows a very uh, strong karmic time when uh, fated events can take place so it is recommended that when Kal Sarp Yoga is going on till the end of December because Mercury will stay in Sagittarius and then in Capricorn and then maybe by the next new year we can see that the effect of Kal Sarp Yoga has reduced and then gradually sun will also move into Capricorn and then it will also break in the Kals of Yoga. That is why it is highly recommended that these times we do spiritual practices and meditation so that we can actually see and try to realize what uh, is actually the universe trying to tell us because when yogas like Kals of Yoga is going on, it can be very difficult for us to figure out who we actually are, what we are supposed to do, what we are not supposed to do. Yes. So therefore, it is very important that we try to read all the scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran or the Bible or whichever tradition we are following and chant mantras of God and visit the holy people and the holy sages and saints and different holy places like Mathura, Vrindavan or if you are a Muslim, you can visit Makkah <laughs> or whichever uh, place you identify more with, yes, whichever gives you higher fulfillment and these are the times when we should especially be very concerned with having our connection to our gurus, our preceptors, our teachers, our spiritual uh, people who have given us guidance throughout in a very strong way because Jupiter is also in Libra and Saturn will also be in Sagittarius. Okay, That is it from my side. It has been a very long video. Thank you very much for your patient hearing till the end. So, good luck with the energies of Sun, Venus, Mercury in the sign of Libra and Scorpio, Jupiter, Mars in Libra and Mars in Virgo and Saturn, Mercury in the sign of Sagittarius. That is it from my side. If you have any questions, queries or comments regarding this video or if you want me to make any other video, then please let me know in the comments. Your opinion is very valuable to me and that is it from my side. Wish you good luck for November. See you in December. Bye-bye.